Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... In the main hall of the variety artist's home, Grease Paint Grange, several members of the home gathered about a Punch and Judy stand. Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins in the front row. Punch was addressing his audience. Excellent, excellent. There were no complications, Mary Maxie? None. Satisfied all went well, Jolly Jenkins? He is dead. As a doornail. And you're quite certain that you were not seen? Oh, quite certain. Not a soul there. Like first house on a Monday. Didn't get an hand. Ladies, gentlemen, please, quiet, quiet. I must remind you that Sir Jeremy was only one of the board. Our work must continue. I agree. No resting. A long run. That's what we want. Our revenge will not be complete until all the directors have been removed. Look at this. It is a photograph of another director of the Capital Land and Development Company. His name is the Honorable Thomas Randolph Cleghorn. Punch waved the toy club and brought it down hard on the wooden platform in front of him. He is your next victim. Strike! Strike! Now! 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 He must be killed! 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 Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Since mm -hmm. then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans Best. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's on inside. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're Wall's Pink Pussycat now. Oh. Episode 2 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel are called in to investigate a second murder and get rather more on the right track, and even come near to saying... Stop me if you heard this. John Steed and Mrs. Peel found themselves assigned to an unusual murder case. Murder cases weren't really their department. Normally, it would be a police or a Scotland Yard matter. But Sir Jeremy Broadfoot was an extremely important man whose company had just landed a secret government project. He had been shot dead, and his death might jeopardize the government planning. So, Steed and Emma Peel found themselves looking into things. They hadn't got very far, and certainly didn't anticipate that another murder had been arranged. The victim this time was the Honourable Thomas Randolph Cleghorn, who was extremely fond of hunting, shooting and fishing. He was very much a hunting, shooting and fishing man. Yeah, splendid day for a shoot, Ponsonby. Oh, rather. The water looks fine. Plenty of fowl here. I uh, should get a brace of plump duck within the hour. Oh, should do. Look, I'll take the far shore side. You work round to the woods over there. Flush them out. Ducks will rise on this marsh. I'll give him a duck call. <laughs> oh, great. Shh. Listen. There, see? But what Cleghorn didn't know was that some little way away in the marshland, Mary Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins, attired in their stage outfits, were sitting in a flat punt. Jenkins blew through a musical instrument and repeated the duck call. <laughs> oh, that'll get him, Jolly. 
Uh, they'll be folded in the house. Got the feathers ready? Feathers at the ready, Maxie. Chadum, chadum, chum, chum. Dum, da, 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 dum, da, 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 dum, da, da, da. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the most death-defying act since William Tell and the Apple. Maxie stooped low into the boat and put on the colourful bowler. On the top of it was an artificial duck. Play it again, Jolly. Encore! Play it again! <laughs> Maxie stood up in the punt. The artificial duck appeared above the reeds. Cool, near thing. Like facing rotten eggs at the old Empire Art Depot. Here, Jolly boy, throw the feathers, mate. Throw the feathers. Jolly Jenkins threw a handful of feathers into the air, and they both crouched low in the punt. A few minutes later, Cleghorn splashed his way through the marsh, crashing through the reeds, confident of a kill. I say, I say, I uh, say. Uh, Would you care to hear what the girl said to the sailor? Oh, don't be disgusting. Perfectly correct. I thank you. <laughs> we always hit them hard. Knock them in the house like... And this, and this, and this. Maxie and Jolly made their exit in the punt. Oh, we're very, very sad that you've had to leave us. But when you've got to go, you've got to go. Red ping pong ball with a hole in it. Concentrate on the game. I thought you were good at table tennis. I am. Come on, your service. Sixteen seven. Of course, it needn't have anything to do with the murder. It was found on the scene of the crime near Cleghorn's body. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so you said. But the Honourable T. R. Cleghorn was drowned. And bopped on the head severely. Very badly bashed on the top of his artistic cranium. Bop with the traditional bopper, in fact. A blunt instrument. There. Shot. Oh, none of it makes much sense. Gigantic footprints, sticks that turn into bunches of flowers, and now red ping-pong balls. Oh, well, perhaps I'll stand more chance of beating you if I used the red ping-pong ball or wore it as a nose. Hey, Steed. Da 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 all the world loves a clown. Mrs. Peel popped the red ball onto the end of her nose and did a little clown's dance. Now, why the devil didn't I think of that? Of course. Come on, Mrs. Peel, I've got another job for you. You're joking. Oh, I'm not. I'm not even clowning. Come on. <laughs> The Variety Organization's make-up registration office in Stepney consists of two very crowded rooms and only one person. The person is Miss Marcia Rugman, a small lady, nervous and highly strung. She'd led a very checkered life, having been a singer, a dancer, a trapeze artist, a wardrobe mistress, a dresser, and now keeper of records. When Mrs. Peel walked into the building, Miss Rugman was painting an egg. She was painting most meticulously the face of a clown upon it, noting every detail of its distinctive makeup. Mrs. Peel rang the doorbell rather loudly. Miss Rugman gave a start, the egg rolled off the desk and broke. Oh, oh dear, 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 dear. That, that, that's the second today. Oh, all right, all right. Patience, patience. Yes? Marcia Rudman, make-up registration? Yes. Emma Peel. I phoned you earlier to ask for information. May I come in? Come in? Oh, that's most unusual. Is it? I thought these were public offices. But that's the trouble. They're too public. Oh, oh all right. Come in if you must. Kindly notice the notices. Mrs. Peel looked around the walls. There were many notices, all exhorting callers to take care. Don't tread carelessly or bang into anything. Don't swing handbags. Don't talk loudly. Don't bounce on your toes. Don't vibrate. Don't even breathe near eggs. Just don't. One section particularly could apply to you, the handbag. You see, I have to take these precautions. Every clown's makeup in this section is carefully recorded on an egg and stored in those long racks. Every clown's face registered and copyrighted, all on large-sized eggs. Oh, if they ever broke omelets for life, this is not 
Funny, Mrs. Peel. Oh, sorry. I want to trace a clown, a red-nosed comedian. What does he look like? Ah, well, that's the trouble. We have so little to go on, except this. Mrs. Peel drew from her pocket the red ping-pong ball with the hole in it. Of course, to me, it's just a red ping-pong ball. But perhaps mm, it will take time. Color, mm, shape. It will take time. But just leave it to me. I'll trace it. Miss, leave it to me. <laughs> Marcia Rugman may have been confident that she could trace this red-nosed comic, but the board of the Capital Land and Development Company weren't so sure it would do any good. A red-nosed comedian? Oh, rare indeed. Well, that's the line we're following, Lord Dessington. But where's the sense in it? Two of our board have been murdered. You're trying to tell us that some fellow with a red nose... Would be excellently disguised. Not so, Sigrid? Hmm. Steve's got a point there, my lord. All clowns look alike. What do you think, Wiltshire? I prefer a good baritone myself, or a troop of gals, eh? High-stepping young fillies. <laughs> no disguising their charm. Well, that's hardly the point. I still say, what's the sense in it, Steed? You were brought in because of Project Cupid. Because the murders might be part of a bigger plot to wreck the project, and now we are talking about comedians. The whole thing's been trouble from the very start. I mean, this project... Oh, come now, Wiltshire. Oh, what do you mean, trouble? Uh, I thought it had all gone smoothly. And so it has, Mr. Steed. As the youngest member and accountant... Uh, you know my... least about it, Seagrave. What about the fights we've had? Bradfoot and Cleghorn arguing about the choice of materials. You and Desington over the choice of subcontractors. Perfectly normal on a project of Cupid size. Natural to have disagreements on perfectly amicable terms. Yes, well, I won't keep you any longer, gentlemen. I don't have to warn you to be on your guard. Against comedians? Uh, what'll he do? Tickle us to death. <laughs> it won't be a joking matter. Oh, incidentally, Mr. Seagrave, uh, you were wrong about all clowns looking the same. Every clown registers his personal makeup. It's copyright, and they can all be traced. That's what we're working on at the moment. Well, good day. <laughs> Later, in Grease Paint Grange, Punch, from his stage, was holding forth. Ladies and gentlemen, I have summoned this meeting because we do have an emergency. An emergency? What is it? We were all set to play the game with Wiltshire. Wiltshire will have to wait. This concerns part of your makeup, carelessly left at the scene of the last crime. Oh, that was only a facial extremity, a scarlet proboscis, a... A nose by any other name, hmm? It was a vital clue to your identity. You have both been wearing full stage makeup. Well, I work best when I'm in oh, costume. I feel naked without it. He's right. We work the act like this all the time. Quite. But your makeup is distinctive to you. Well, of course it is. If I found out anybody was pinching my act, you know what I. The registration offices. Miss Rugman. Exactly. She is the emergency. She must be disposed of. What do you say to that? Yes, kill! 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 Your dog gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete and he'll love it. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Uh, I can't even explain it. it. It astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omer. <laughs>